Hope you got that Bible. I'm Sam. I'm Shanae. This is our 10 month old son, William. And we have a seven year old great dane called George. And we're adventuring right. So we're planning to do the big lap in the future. Um, we, um, we just need a break uh, from the daily grind of work, sleep, repeat. Um, we just feel like life is passing us by a lot quicker than we thought it would. Um, and um, yeah, we want to get out and experience what this country has in terms of cultures, landscapes, um, and share those memories with our, with our children as well. So currently we're just on a typical weekend away close to home. We're at a hip camp called Forest Fields Camp Stay. Some might formally know it as Byfield Camp Stay. It has um, amenities here, wide open spaces that are very well manicured by the hosts. They can take up to 20 people or 20 campsites with a few vehicles per site at any one time. There's other people here at the moment and you wouldn't even know that they're here. They're so far away, they're quiet. We can't even see them. It's beautiful. Yeah, great place. We'll definitely be back for sure. So currently we have a 2019 Patriot um, Campers X1 um, camp trailer. Um, and that thing literally will go anywhere, which we proved this year, taking it um, up the old telegraph track in Cape York. Um, we were able to get up down and do all the hard tracks and um, just drag it through. Um, our tow vehicle we've recently upgraded. We did have a 2008 um, Land Cruiser 200 um, GXL. It was a petrol model. Um, it did have a GVM upgrade um, and it was set up to tour Australia, um, which we plan to do in the future. But because of Queensland um, GVM GCM laws, um, we were not able to uh, increase the GCM, um, which is your gross combined mass. Um, and because of that, we would have had to settle for a smaller van, so we would have had to go for a single axle. Um, and with those single axles, you uh, once you add water, you basically lose your whole payload. So we needed a dual axle, so um, we made the decision to upgrade to the vehicle behind us, which is another Land Cruiser 200, um, 2019 GXL. Um, but it has a pre-registration, federally approved um, GVM upgrade, um, which will allow us to tow that bigger van um, when we do do our big lap of Australia. Um, so yeah, we have the fun of rebuilding this thing behind us, um, back up to the same spec as the old vehicle. Um, and yeah, like I said, uh, we plan to have a full off-road caravan in the future, which we have a, have ordered, um, and it's due in February 2024. So um, our setup's constantly evolving um, at the moment. Yeah, so we um, suppose to keep up with a growing family, that's why we have had to increase just with the changing times and then eventually once we do our lap we'll have our have a van to do it in and hopefully that's the setup then that we will run for a long time afterwards. So for us being able to get full off grid we do prefer those free camps or low cost camps where possible. Um, especially on those bigger trips that we mentioned that we try and do each year, they are places that you have to be fully self-sufficient and off grid. So whether that's, obviously we have- National parks, yeah, skip camps. People's properties. Yeah, the, big, the biggest thing we like is um, planning our trip and being self-sufficient and self-reliant on our own. So um, that's, uh, that, that's what we enjoy. Um, but the benefit of, I suppose, of a caravan park every now and then is just to kind of reset yourself, you know, get back there, do your laundry, fill up your water tanks. Um, Have a nice long hot shower, yep, not yep. wasting your water. Yep. Um, and even just the amenities that a caravan park has, you know, kids be able to, whether they have a pool or a little water park, just something different for kids to get out and explore as well. And that's where you find a lot of like-minded people as well, close together. So. That's another benefit, I suppose, when we do park up occasionally at a caravan park. Yeah, just a few more luxuries, then you get off grid. Um, is there a place that you won't go back to? <laughs> yes, um, so it was a national park or state forest camp spot. Um, 
It was more for people, not abiding by the rules. So it's a dog friendly campground with amenities. But at the time we had two Great Danes with <coughs> us and other people rocked up. Their dogs weren't on leave, so they were constantly coming over and annoying our dogs. And, you know, we've got big dogs, they bark with everyone. Um, we got attacked by March flies. There wasn't much to do there either. So you're just kind of like sitting, staring at the campsite next to you because you're packed in like sardines. So we can say we've done it, but that's one place we definitely won't go back. Yeah, agreed. So for us, this is the Simpson Desert. So this is planned for uh, mid 2023. Um, we're planning to do another trip solo and uh, cross the Simpson Desert, um, get to the geographical center of Australia. Um, and then eventually, you know, we plan on doing all the edges of, of, of Australia, you know, the north, south, east, west. Um, yeah, I think that'd be great. Yeah, so by 2023, we would have done the northern and the geographical center. So we've done two, three to tick off, and we expect to get those done when we do our big lap. Yes, we currently have a seven-year-old Great Dane, George. So obviously when he's with us, which we try and camp with him most of the time, we are restricted. Obviously we can't go into national parks. So we are choosing more of your hip camps um, when he's with us. So, but apart from that, if we are going on those bigger trips and he can't come with us, he will stay with friends or family also have large dogs and they tend to just get on like a house on fire so we know he's well looked after and probably even more spoiled than what he would be if he was with us at that time. Yeah he definitely enjoys, enjoys those. <laughs> um, so mine is more of a scary moment so it was in 2022 when we did Cape York we were on the telly track and it was at Mistake Creek so if anyone's watched it on YouTube, you, it looks steep. It's it, it's even steeper in person. So I was out of the vehicle, down the bottom, filming. Sam's driving the, the car with William in the back seat. So as you come down, it's a bit of a, come around a corner into some heavy ruts, down a hill, and then it's a sharp right turnout. So we had the Patriot on the back. Sam had to take different lines to your typical ones to just make sure the trailer was coming around as well and looking up with these big deep ruts all i could see was the rear left tire of the car sliding into these massive ruts and flash forward in my mind all i could see was our whole setup rolling with my whole family in the car which absolutely freaked me out um so at that moment um all i could do was you know we sam stopped and it was a not a winch recovery as such but more to correct the, the bad line that just those off camber ruts had pulled Sam into. So a couple winch relocations because I said it was that heavy it started to pull a tree over. Um, all while my heart was in my mouth just watching our whole setup and my whole family. Um, but eventually, clearly, we made it down. Um, we, Sam, did all the hard driving. I just tried not to breathe and cry too heavily. Um, but yeah, that was definitely something scary as an onlooker to see. Yeah, well, just another um, another instance where just taking it slow and being prepared um, and not being silly uh, pays off. So, yeah, like Sinead said, I took a bit of a wider turn um, to try and stay out of the ruts to get round, and um, my back left and my car slipped in into the ruts, and um, that was off camber heading down a hill. So. All we did, yeah, like Sinead said, was um, use the winch to help pull the front of the car back into the ruts and, and away we went. So, um, yeah, that was good fun, but, but yeah. Many things we could list on here, um, but I would say probably the um, baby WebEQ um, high top lid, so the, the 1200. Um, basically, that thing has allowed us to cook anything from dampers to, to um, roasts, um, great steaks um, but yeah um, you, you can use them anywhere um, but they definitely a game changer for steaks so once you've had a, a good steak on a Weber Q there's no going back so definitely I reckon and Weber it makes Q. a mean damper but also like I said you know we're weekend campers so we tend to pull up somewhere 
late on a Friday. We don't have time to pull out a camp oven, start a fire, to have dinner at a reasonable time. So it's easy enough to just pull it out of the front of the Patriot, whack a gas bottle up to it, turn it on, and dinner's ready in no time at all. So convenience as well as flavour. Yeah. So at the moment we are working hard, saving hard, because our ideal is once we do take off for our big lap, we don't want to work if possible. We want to enjoy the whole time that we're on the road as a family, but we aren't opposed to working if need be, especially if it's an area that we plan to be pulled up for a while and there is some work going. Um, not opposed to it. With my profession as well, I have the, be uh, the, uh, the, the beauty that I can locum around Australia as well. So again, that's an opportunity if need be, but for now it's just safe, safe, safe. So, for us at the moment, it definitely is fuel and food, as most people would say. Um, we haven't done a big trip yet with the new Silver 200 behind us, so we gonna have, I'm just going to touch on our Cape York travel. So when we had the petrol 200, um, she was thirsty, she was heavy as well. So in a three week trip from home up to the tip of Cape York and back. So for us that was covering about well, somewhere around 3,000 kilometers I believe from memory. We used somewhere between $2,500 and $3,000 in fuel. Um, yeah, especially on the tally track, we worked out we were running about 59, 60 liters, 100. That was low range though. Low range, slow yeah. going. And um, and telling a trailer, so yeah. yeah. And we expect again, like once we're on a big lap, it'll be be the same food, fuel. We like to eat pretty healthy too, so our our food bills aren't cheap as it is. <laughs> um, I suppose for us, we've always been someone who has tried to be really organised and just planned to a T. So something that we've Especially with our bigger trips, we've started to learn that you could plan, you know, day one, we're going to travel from here to here and do X number of kilometers. Day two, same thing. As we've done more and more bigger trips, we have started to learn rather than go allow one day to get from A to B, we've allowed two or three days to cover a certain number of kilometers. So there is that leeway if the roads are a bit different to what you expected or the weather's a bit different or, you know, traveling with kids that they're a bit grumpy in the back seat and you have to stop a bit more frequently. So I suppose being a bit more flexible with your planning and giving yourself just those leeway days to catch up if you want to or slow down if you want to. Yep, I'd agree with that. Uh, um, I'd probably just say seeing new things and, um, and, and having new experiences um, is, is, is biggest thing I mean the freedom of um, being able to you know go where you want when you want um, is, is is just great you're not you're not working on a strict timeline yep. and again we made the decision many years ago um, that our honeymoon was going to be our final trip overseas because we wanted to explore Australia before we went back overseas so just being able to again yeah that freedom of our own country and it is such a big place so we plan yeah minimum two years when we eventually set off i'd say all the um mods, for the car. Mod mods we put on the car um a lot of them are expensive but uh paid, paid off um because we want to take our car, we don't want to be restricted where we go with it. We want to we want to make sure it's protected. Um, we had uh, bull bar um, sliders and rear bar on the old white 200, and um, all of them cops hits on the, the tele track. And I mean, if we didn't have that that protection, we would have um, you know pulled panels off, you know done done a bit of damage. So um, that'd probably be our biggest splurge, I'd say, but um, definitely worth it. And for safety, traveling with your family, if that's your, that's your vehicle, you want to feel safe in it too. Um, 
Yes, <laughs> definitely. Our, so for us, it's our AeroPress coffee device. Um, mm. We are really big coffee drinkers, love a strong morning coffee. And anyone who's used an AeroPress, it can be quite time consuming. And we also had the grinder to go with it. So, you know, you grind your beans, do the process of your AeroPress. And because we like that strong coffee and there's two of us, we were having to do the process twice every time we wanted a coffee. So it almost felt more like a chore than getting a chance to actually enjoy said coffee. So we have upgraded to more of a stove top coffee pot and it's so much quicker. Yeah. Um, and actually I think gives a bit of flavor to the beans that we choose to use. Yep, definitely. Not really um, in a sense of where we could go. Our region wasn't subject to lockdowns, so we could still get out for our typical weekends. For us, it was more at the time when we were building our tow vehicle. We um, were waiting on deliveries for, for those parts to arrive. So it was more that the, yeah, just the post of mods waiting to arrive rather than us be able to be restricted in where we could go. We're both essential workers, so we still worked Monday to Friday as well. Yeah. Well, yeah. we'd say something about yeah. traveling, traveling with um, with William. You know, so, the yeah, porter cot. So we invested in a porter cot. Mm. Again, something mentioned to us from another traveling family that we thought was a good idea, and we've since probably passed it on to other people as well. So invested in a good porter cot. It's obviously not only a cot for them to sleep in, but during the day it acts as a playpen. We've got one that's raised off the ground as well, so a bit more ventilation. Came with a um, like a midgy mesh cover, yep. so not you can park him under trees and not be afraid of something falling and hitting him on the head or little bugs getting in. So yep, change table as well. Yep, ours came with a change table, so that's yep. again game changer. And quick and easy to set up. That's that's the biggest thing, you know. You need something that's quick and easy, but still robust enough to last time. Um, the only thing that we didn't like was the, the cover it came in, the, the carry case. It was a bit cheap and... Yeah, I think it wore through before we even finished yeah. our first trip. So um, we actually had a family friend of ours um, make up a, a nice canvas um, carry case for it. And that's that's going to see out the, the yeah. porter cot, I think. That so. one's copped a beating. That one went to the Cape and back and we'll go to the Simpson in 2023 as well. So yeah. it goes on flights and it's on my own airplanes as well. So it just goes everywhere now. Yeah. So yeah, just biggest tip for those traveling with kids is to make sure you do invest in a really good port cot especially when you're going camping, so. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> so thank you, Big Lap Bible.